Okay, so now we're going to look at a, an example problem of using a linear function to model data. So these four steps we had already written down uh, last time we did the scatter plot notes, but now we never actually did the steps in an example problem, which we're going to do today. So just to recap these four steps, make a scatter plot and determine correlation. Okay, so the plot all the dots on your graph, you know, label everything, uh, and figure out what the pattern is. Is it a positive correlation? Is it a negative correlation? Is there no correlation? You should be able to see that from just the dots. Step two, draw a line that seems to follow the data pattern. Okay. So if you've got a positive correlation, you draw a positive sloping line that seems to fit the dots of your scatter plot. Step three is to write the equation for that line that you drew. And then step four is we're going to use that line to make predictions. Remember, for our predictions, we had two types of predictions. We had linear extrapolation, which is when you make predictions outside of your data range. And you had linear interpolation which is when you make predictions within the data range. Okay. So we're going to look at an example for these using these four steps. So in this example, the table below gives the number of hours spent studying for a science exam. That's going to be your x variable, your explanatory. And the final exam, your y variable, which is going to be your response variable. Okay. So we got our hours for x and our grade for y. Okay. All right, so we're going to have to make a graph. Okay. We're going to have the grade go down the y-axis, okay. and we're going to have the hours studying on the x-axis. Okay. We'll put zero in the corner. Okay. Now we got to figure out what we should go by. Our x values look like they're all between zero and five. So on a graph, let's see, we have a lot of spaces here. So maybe every other one will be one hour. So we have half hours in between, but I'm only going to label the whole numbers. Okay. All right, so that should be enough for the hours. Now looking at the grades, we have a lowest value of 63 and a highest value of 92. So we need values between 63 and 92. So starting at zero doesn't, isn't going to make sense for this graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a line break, They're usually just two lines, to kind of, it, what that means is it's, we're skipping from zero to a number that's going to make more sense for us. Okay. So let's start at 50. Okay. And then from there we'll go up by fives, so every other one will be 10. So 50, 60, 70, all the in-betweens will be the fives, 90, and that puts us at 100 up top. Okay. And again, that line break just means, hey, the pattern broke. We're not going by 10s between 0 and 50. We just jumped ahead. Okay. All right, so now we'll graph these points. Okay, you got the points from the table. Hours and grade, Xs and Ys. So the first one is 2 and 77. So we go 2 and up 77. Okay. Now, again, the graph doesn't have to be perfect because we're not going to use the points on the graph. We're going to just use them to create a line, and then we're going to use that line to make the predictions. Okay. So we've got 277, 5, up 92, do that there, 170, that'll be a nice point, 0, 63, that's your y, that's on the y-axis, 490, 275, so we got two points right by each other there. And then 384. Okay. All right, so that's a rough sketch of these data points. Okay. So that was step one, make a scatter plot and determine correlation. So what's our correlation? We have to decide. Remember, our correlation options are positive, negative, or none. And then within those options, you have strong and weak. So our correlation the, is positive. We can tell that because all the values are sloping upward. As, of that, as you, x increases, y is also increasing. So this is positive. And I'd also consider this to be a strong correlation because the data values are pretty closely clustered together into a straight line. So we'll say positive and strong. Okay, or strong positive. Okay, so that's my correlation which means I know my equation is going to have a positive slope. All right, step two, draw a line that seems to follow the data pattern. 
Now, again, the line I draw might be different from the line you draw. All our lines are going to be a little different based on how we draw them. So there's going to be a range of answers. There's no right answer. So this is just the line of fit. It's not necessarily the line of best fit. So we're going to just draw a line that seems to model and kind of fit some of the data points. All right, so that looks like it works. It's not, again, yours might be a little different. It might go through some different points. Okay, so that was step two. Draw a line that seems to follow a data pattern. I think we did that. Step three is to write the equation for that line. Okay. Now, notice that our line doesn't actually go through any of the points on the table, okay, which is fine. A lot of times it won't ha that that'll happen. A lot of times you won't be going through the actual data points. But we still need two points that are on that line because, remember, we need two lines to write the equation. So we need to pick two kind of nice points that are going to help us find the slope and then ultimately write it in slope-intercept form. So when you're looking at your graph, you want to find you know, the nice points. So you want to find where does the line go through kind of a nice grid. So it looks like I could do this point down here. Again, it's not going to be perfect. But it looks like this one is going to work. Okay. And that is at the point 3.585. And then is there anywhere else? Looks like up here might work. And that is going to be the point 595. So those are the two points I'm going to use to write the equation of the line. Do those points go, are those points exact? Probably not. Okay. It doesn't have to be exact. It just has to be a kind of an estimate at this point. Because we're not, you know, when we do it in the calculator, the calculator is going to give us the best answer. When we're doing it by hand, we just kind of want a good enough answer. So I think those two points will give us good enough. Okay. All right, so... Those are the two points I'm going to use. The first thing I'm going to have to do is find the slope. So we're going to use the slope formula with those two points. Those are my y1, x1, y1, x2, y2. So we'll do y2 minus y1, which is going to be 95 minus 85, over x2 minus x1. That's going to be 5 minus 3.5. So on top, that's going to be 10. On the bottom, that's going to be 1.5. And 10 divided by 1.5 is 6.7. So again, recap, it's about, well, it's 6.666 6 repeating, so I'm going to just round it to 6.7. Again, to recap, we drew the line, and then we just picked two points that look like they're nice fits for that line. It looks like they go through nice points. And we use those coordinate pairs, those x ones, y ones, in the slope formula to find the slope. Now we want to write the equation for the line do that, I'm going to use point slope form because we know two points and we know the slope. Okay, the slope is 6.7 and then I'm going to use this top point because it doesn't have any decimals in it as my point. So I'm going to use that point as my x and y and I'm going to use that slope for m and we're going to use point slope form. Which remember is y1, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And then we're going to plug in the parts that we know. I'm going to plug in 6.7 for m. And I'm going to plug in 95 for y1. So we'll do y minus 95 equals my slope, 6.7, times x minus the x value, which was 5. Okay, so that was the point I picked. I could have picked the other point, but I picked this one because of the decimals. All right, and then simplify. You want your equation in slope-intercept form. So distribute the 6.7, distribute the slope. Give me 6.7x minus 6.7 times 5, which is 33.5. Okay. And then left side just stays the same. And now we're one step away from a slope-intercept equation. The slope-intercept equation will add 5 on... Add 95 to both sides. And my equation in slope-intercept form is going to be y equals 6.7x plus 61.5. Let's interpret what some of these numbers mean. So again, we have the slope-intercept form, which means we know the slope and the y-intercept. What does the slope represent in this problem? Okay. 
Well, remember, slope is rise over run. It's the y value, change in the y value over the change in the x value. So 6.5 in this problem represents the grade per hour. So it's the grade increase per hour. So for each hour you study, your grade is going to improve 6.5 or 6.7 you know, percentages. What does the y-intercept represent? So remember the term at the end of slope-intercept form is the y-intercept. What does the y-intercept represent? Well, in this case, your y-intercept is whenever x is 0. So when x is 0 in this problem, x represents the number of hours studied. So that's going to be your grade if you don't study at all. It's your grade for no studying, 0 hours. So it's good to be able to interpret what your bear with the intercept and the slope actually means in the context of the problem. Okay, so that was step three. That was write an equation for the line. Okay, we did that. So now we have an, a model for this data. Now we're going to use that line to make some predictions. So my equation, I'm going to rewrite it onto this page. My equation is y equals 6.7x plus 61.5. Okay, again, x is the number of hours studied, y is the grade. Predict the exam grade of a student who studied for 2.5 hours. Okay. Now on the table, you know, on the graph, we can go 2.5 hours, which is right down here, okay, and go up to the graph, which is up here. Okay. So we ex should expect a value kind of in the upper 70s, okay, if you go over to that y-axis. So we expect a value in the upper 70s. Okay. Well, let's see what our equation gives us, okay, because again, our equation is going to model that. So it should give us that number. Okay, so to find that, we're going to plug in 2.5 for x because x is the number of hours studied. So if we're going to plug in 2.5 for x, it's going to be 6.7 times 2.5 plus 61.5. Okay. And then just evaluate. That's going to give you a grade of 6.7 times 2.5. which is 16.75 plus 61.5. So we could get a, va a percent, a grade of 78.25%, okay, which is what the graph told us as well. It's some, you know, just below 80, or okay, somewhere in the upper 70s. Okay. All right, predict the exam grade of a student who studied for six hours. Okay, so again, this is your X value. So you're going to take your equation, 6.7x, but instead of x, you're going to plug in 6. And then just evaluate that. Put that in the calculator, and you will get 101.7%. Okay, that seems impossible, but that's all right. And then the last one, what if you study for 10 hours? Okay, now, again, 6 hours and 10 hours are off our graph. They're out of our data range, and we're going to talk about that in a second. 10 hours is way off the graph. So we plug in 10 for x, we get 6.7 times 10, which is 67 plus 61.5. So that's going to be 128.5%. Okay. So you're probably thinking, how can these values be bigger than 100%? How are you going to get bigger than 100% on the test? Well, again, this comes down to the two types of predictions. This first one, the first prediction was using 2.5 hours. This was interpolation. Why was it an interpolation? Because it was within our data range. Okay, the 2.5 is within the values on the graph. Now the other ones, the 6 and the 10, 6 is off the graph. It's out of our data range. The 10 is way out of the data range. So the, using 6 and 10, we're both extrapolation. Now remember, we talked about extrapolation last time. Extrapolation is a less reliable source because we don't know for certain that the data, that the pattern continues. And in this case, since we know about grades, we know you're not going to be able to get a grade over 100% if you study for 10 hours. If you study for you know, 100 hours, you're not going to get you know, you know, 600% or whatever. So that's extrapolation because it doesn't, you know, it's out of our data range. We don't know if it's, the pattern's going to continue or not, which is why we're getting these numbers that aren't really realistic. But when we did 2.5 hours, that's a reasonable number, 78%. That's a normal test grade. So those are all inputs 
What if you want to figure out how long you should study to get exactly 100%? Okay. Well, 100% is your y value. That's your output. So we're going to just solve the equation, but instead of y equals, we're going to say 100 equals. Okay. And we don't know what x is. So we're going to say 100 equals 6.7x plus 61.5. Two-step equation, solve for x. So subtract 61.5. And then divide by 6.7. So that's going to give me 38.5 equals 6.7x. And this number, this x value, is going to be how many hours you should study to get 100%, okay, based on our model. Now, again, is our model accurate? You know, it's fairly accurate based on the data that we had. Okay. So 38.5 divided by 6.7. And again, according to our model, you would need to study for 5.7 hours to get 100%, exactly 100%. And again, that should be reflected in our graph. Okay, The line doesn't exactly quite get to 100, but if that pattern continued, it would be a little over 5.5, okay, which is about 5.7, which is what we had. So we got it. We could do it graphically. We could do it algebraically. All right. And the last thing to talk about, and again, that was also extrapolation. Extrapolation also works for the y values. This was extrapolation because 100% was bigger than any of the data points that we had. So what's the issue with extrapolation? Well, it's again everything we've kind of said. It's unreliable because we don't know the pattern continues. For example, in this case, there are data restrictions. The data restrictions on a test are between 0% and 100%. So all data, not all data, most data has restrictions. So this one, you can't score higher than 100% on a test, at least naturally. So your Y values would have to stay between 0 and 100. And your X values would have to be bigger than 0 because you can't study negative hours. So there's restrictions that the extrapolation doesn't, you know, doesn't factor in. Okay. So we, again, we can't be certain that the pattern is going to continue. We know the pattern won't continue because you're not going to get 120%. So again, the restrictions that we wrote down here, this is the grade restriction. Okay, your grade is going to have to be between 0 and 100. And this is the hours restrictions. You're going to have to have a positive number of hours studied or 0. You're not, you can't have negative. All right, so again, those were the four steps and then some practice problems for using a linear function model to make the scatter plot, determine correlation, draw the line that follows the data, write an equation for that line. Okay, you're going to find, pick two points, find the slope, use point-slope form, convert to slope-intercept. So all these skills that we did in the past are coming back now. And then we're going to use that line ultimately to answer questions and to make predictions.